Hi, it's Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser, and I'm here. I decided to put my gloves on today. It's Ask Dr. Lori Live, and of course, everything unscripted, your objects, you're the guests, and we're going to see what you've got, thrifting, yard sailing, and such. I put my gloves on because I didn't know if I wanted to touch some of the stuff on my, of course, um, on my table here today. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. So good to see you. So good to see you. What's your first name? What is that behind you? Is that a cat in a top hat? Yeah, yeah. That's my, that's my cat, Richard. Wow. Did you paint that? Yeah, yes. Okay. Well, you're. I can't paint anything. But it does he usually wear a top hat around the house? Not usually. Okay. Well, he's looking very regal and debonair. So uh, tell me, what's your first name and where are you calling from? I'm Sherry and I'm calling from uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia. Oh, it's nice to see you, Sherry. Nice so what can you. I look up for you today? Well, I was at the thrift store the other day, okay. and I found um, I found, found a piece something of, in a frame. Something in a frame. Yep. Okay. With a big glare. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got to get a little closer to the camera if you can. It looks like it might be. Well, it's a landscape, seascape, gouache. Is it signed? Um, it's not signed, but the back of it. I so looked. At, yeah, I looked at it. It has writing. Yeah, which says what? It you says got 19, you've got contemporary. Uh, uh, you've got contemporary framers points on it. See those little contemporary framer points? So somebody put that back together at some point within the last 10, 15 years. Wow. Okay. What well, does the writing I, say? Yeah, I could see the. Uh, what does the writing say? Uh, it's a copy of a sketch on Hampstead Heath by Constable in the Tate Gallery. Okay. Okay, so it's not a gouache. It's actually, it is a color lithographic print, which is put out by the museum. Value on it, about $25 for the print, about $25 for the frame. Where did you get it? Thrift store shopping, and what did you pay? Well, it says E.S. Nevinson. What did you pay? What did you pay? I paid $2. Okay, well, you did okay for $50. That's it's not bad. You can see that it has texture inside. Like it's I know, like I know. A lot of them look like they have texture inside. Those are usually hand printed, right? So they're hand printed. They're not offset lithographs, but still a color lithograph. So you still got to print, but 50 bucks is pretty good for a $2 investment. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So a couple of things you want to look for when you're looking at those types of pieces. First of all, I want you to look for, in fact, when you see those framers points, I want you to be able to date those different framers points because that's going to tell you if that piece was put into a different frame or if it's been changed in some way. So I explained on a different video all about the difference between offset lithography, right, and then hand done lithography. And that's where she's probably seeing texture on that print. But the constable, of course, is in the major museum. It's not in the thrift store at this particular case. But thanks very much. My next guest. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you doing? Hi, Dr. Lori. How are you? Good. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? My name is Melissa. I'm calling Hi. from Roanoke, Virginia. Nice to see you. So Hi. what's that orange thing behind you? It's like big and orange. <laughs> it's a lamp. Wow. Kind of cool. Yeah. It's actually a vase lamp. <laughs> yeah. All right. I just okay. wondered because it was a different, interesting color. It's not a color that we're seeing in vogue right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's kind of nice. a mom color in real life. Yeah. Nice yeah. to see you. So, Melissa. Yes. What have you got? Okay. In front of the see. camera, please, hon. Yeah. There we go. Oh, two little monkeys hugging. All right. Looks yeah. like it's ceramic. Looks like it's hand painted. Doesn't look like there's much glaze on it. Is there a mark on the bottom? No. Okay. All right. So, do you see that form, little hole? Then you see that form. It almost looks like a moon, almost like a crescent moon as the indentation. That piece is made in China. It's made anytime between 1960 and 1975. Value on it, about $15. How much did you pay? Where did you get it? I got it at a, like a little uh, religious thrift store. Really cute, really fun. I paid about a quarter for it. There you go. Good job. All right. Thanks. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So a couple things that I want you to be able to look for, because here I'm going to show you what to look for. So you know what to look for. So you buy the right stuff. And so you leave the junk wherever the junk may need to be left. So, so what to look for when it comes to those kinds of ceramics, they're cute. If you don't see an overglaze, usually you've got a little bit of a lower quality piece, but that was fun for the two little pieces. Thanks very much for the super chats and the super stickers. And thanks very much for joining me too. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD antiques appraiser. Have you signed up and subscribed to my newsletter yet? I hope you have because there's all kinds of information there too. The newsletter, of course, on my website, 
go there, put in your email address. And then when we send you out the newsletter, of course, you will receive it. There's no reason for you to do anything else. Just wait for the newsletter to come. It comes regularly. Thanks for subscribing to that. Here's my next guest. Hi. Hello, Dr. Lurie. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Your first name and your where are you calling from, please? Yes. Uh, my name is Megan. I'm calling from Washington State. Hi, Megan. So Hi. what have you got? An owl? Yes. So or I have, three? I, yes, I'm the one who wrote and said I have three owls. Okay. Well, let's see. You have three owls and you asked if they were or a set, right? Yes. They all look okay. really similar. They're just slightly different. Now, you sent in an email to the website and someone asked me this question, which is how I know, because all of this is unscripted. I have not seen your owls, Megan, correct? Correct. You have not. Okay. So a couple of things. Have you signed up for my newsletter? Yes, ma'am. All right. Ago. Okay, just checking, checking on you, Megan. All right. Yes. Anyway, so can I see the bottom of um, that owl, please? Yes. Okay. Can I see the bottom of the other owl? Just choose another one. My father collected owls for years and years. He collected owls, all different kinds of owls. He liked wisdom. You know, he's interested in education and wisdom. So owls are that, of course. Okay, next one. Then the third one. Yeah, the third, the third one. Did you get these at a thrift store, yard sale, estate sale, or gym? I got them at a thrift store. Now the back of them, they're for yep. hanging. Yep, yep. Yeah. They're for so hanging on the wall, but you know what they're made from? They're actually made from a particular mold that are used in pottery classes. My cousin and my aunt used to go to pottery class at night, you know, at the local high school, that kind of thing. And they go and they'd make things, a cookie jar, a basket. They make nice things. Uh, that's what those are. That's why you have three. They're pretty popular in the 1970s for pottery class. These people were a little bit better than mass produced pieces. I think whoever painted those knew what they were doing. They're pretty high, high end students, if you will. Yeah. So each one worth about $25. What'd you pay? I paid $250 for all three of them. There you go. Oh, even better. I thought you were going to say two fifty dollars each. Good. Oh, good. Very right. good. <laughs> Terrific. Well, nice to see you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. So she asked me if those were a set. And in fact, they were considered a set. They would have been united and put together. I would think most people would have put all the owls sort of grouped together, that kind of thing. There are a lot of those 1960s wall art pieces that are ceramic for the bathroom or for the living room or for the den, you know, what we, the man cave, we'd call it today. And they usually come in, in threes, you know, the law of thirds usually have three things going together. So that's pretty common. Are they a set technically? Well, they are actually a set. You could, you could sell them individually, but in the 60s, they would have been purchased and of course displayed in a set. So that's great. Thanks very much for the super chats and the super stickers. Why? Because they help support the page. Of course, the channel, they help me to make new videos with my staff and of course the producers. So I appreciate you doing that as well. I'm Dr. Lori. Here's my next guest. Hi. 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 How are you? Good. How are you doing? Good. What's your first name? Where are you calling from? My name is Rebecca and I'm calling from Virginia. Hi, Rebecca. What question do you have for me? Because I'm going to give you the expert answer. So um, I'm new to looking for jewelry and I found this pin here. Okay. Um, and all I could find about it is I think it's... um a Scottish uh, kilt pin. Can I see this? Can you hold it up this way? It would be intended that way. Okay, and can you just tip, just tip it, just tip the top. There you go. There you go. Okay, is it marked at all? Does it have a mark yeah. on it like 835 or not, or 800? Any of those marks on it? It has the lion passant. Okay, so it has the lion looking left, which is an image of the animal of the lion looking left. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. And it also has what looks like a C clasp. Yes. If you watched one of my videos, I teach you guys all about how to identify those. Did you see those videos? I did. Jewelry? Okay. I hope that was helpful. So you yeah. have a uh, sterling silver uh, Scottish kilt pin value on that. P oh, time period for that piece. That piece probably dates between 1940 and 1960. And value on that piece is going to be anywhere, well, I'd say about $100, maybe $125 on a good day. Okay, thank you. How much did you pay? Where did you get it? I paid $15. Mm -hmm. It was at, um, it's kind of an antique store, and they have a lot of pins and brooches, and they always sell them all for $15. Every pin and brooch in the store is $15? 
Except and for would, a couple it, that they have a different price on, but they have boxes of just $15 pins and brooches. If that's the case, get out your loop, which you, of course, can buy at drlaurieve.com, the specials and shopping page. Yes, good. Yes, I do get compensation when you purchase a product, but they're my recommended products. And I want you to go through and look for every, sing every single one of those the next time you're there. I want you to look for the marks that are on drlaurieve.com that are, of course, those fineness marks for silver, gold, platinum, and others. Good for you. Congratulations. You. Nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Love to hear that. So $125 for a $15 investment and something pretty interesting too. Remember, the markets are going to impact, jewelry markets are, of course, always going to be impacted by style, fashion, what's in vogue. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Thanks for joining me. My guests, of course, are all of you. So thanks so much for being with me. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Hi, Dr. Lori. It's Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Where are you are calling you? from, Patricia? I'm calling from New Mexico. Okay. So have you called in before? You seem like I should recognize you. <laughs> um, I have called in once before, and you um, appraised a uh, Tarquay for me. Okay. You know I evaluate 50,000 objects a year last year, so remembering everybody, I apologize. A little tough. <laughs> so okay. tell me, what have we got? I'm glad so, it's okay. Thank you. What do we I got, found, honey? I found another Tarquay. Okay, let's see. I didn't get as good deal on this one as I did the first one. Okay, so how much did you pay for this one? I paid two fifty. Can you get up close to it? Sure. It has. Um, it actually has the um, a printers, a PP. Let's see if I can do this. A printer's, a printer's proof basically indicates that. Now, you'll notice all this texture that all of you were talking about. So a lot of people get confused and they think that that's not a print. But in fact, that piece is a print. So you paid that. You paid uh, $250 for that piece at a, a thrift store, at an antique shop? At a secondhand store. At a secondhand store. Value on that one's going to be about $500 of printer's proof and other, of course, marks and symbols that relate to prints also on the channel. So look for prints and they're also on my website too, where I indicate what that means. Good for you. That's a good deal. Not the best deal, but a good deal. Paid about half, half price basically. So not bad, not bad. But don't be confused that when you see texture, texture is automatically always going to be an original, but that's a nice Tarkay. And Tarkay, of course, very well known. That's a great piece. I like these pieces. Let's see some ceramics. Have we got oh. <laughs> ceramics? Hi. Dr. Hi, Lori, how are Dr. You Lori, how are you? Uh, Elena, Hi. I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Hi, Elena. Elena, Hi. did I get that right? Elena, oh, Elena. Well, or Elena, uh, if you want to use Elena. Italian. There you go. Okay, there we go. so okay. I have a piece of art for you. All right, let's see. And it's right here. I took it out of the frame. It's a watercolor. It's signed right here. I think it says, Angel M. Rodriguez. Uh, so, right, so you took it out of the frame. I took it because it, it has a glass and I knew Elena, it was Elena, 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 hold it. One, okay. more, one, one question first, honey. Just let, me, let me get my bearings. First of all, you took it out of the frame and right now it's, it's in front of the glass frame. Is that what you've done? Yes. So you're leaning it up against the frame? Yes. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. The buckling on the top, can you show me the buckling on the top? It looks like it's buckled, which means there's some water or moisture toward the top. Back up the camera and look at those. See all those striations? That's, yeah, there you go. See it? That's water damage. Okay, so now you were saying something before I stopped you. Go ahead, I sweetie. Um, so I, the, I don't know who it is. Yeah. I, I have no idea the value of it. Uh, okay. it. It's signed and dated January, well, in Spanish, Enero. 65. Okay. That's and, a good time, January of 65, I've got to say. Great, <laughs> great year. Okay. Great month, great year. Very good. And these are the two volcanoes, uh, the Popocatepetl and the Isla Cihuatl. And this is seen from uh, the Puebla side. Mexico City would be on the other end. On the Wonderful. other Wonderful. That's yeah. terrific. I think it's a very well executed watercolor. Can you back up so folks can see the whole piece? We're looking sure. at one tree. There you go. Thank you. Honey. There we go. Very well executed. It is in a period frame. What does that mean when I say that? That means that that frame is probably from 1965. Actually, this is not the frame. That what? Well, that frame is of that same period. It's the same style that we typically see. Value on that. Yeah, I want to know if you have your t-shirt. Dr. Lori says t-shirts on. 
Yeah, like three simple goes. My goodness, or maybe a mug. Value on your piece. Value on your piece about one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Thank you very much. Oh, that was okay. nice. I like that piece very much. What do I like about it? I don't like the water damage, which is why I valued it a little lower than I might for others like it. Uh, artist is relatively well known regionally, and I like the fact that they can characterize the exact place. That's wonderful. Signed and dated is always good. I prefer a sign and a date on the right hand, lower right, but a lot of artists tend to do that as well. So I would say that that piece is really quite nice. Water damage is hard because everybody becomes careful and they say, oh, well, I want to dry mount it to make it flat. But once you dry mount it, you can devalue it. So be careful how you frame it. Make sure you talk to a professional framer. All right. Other tips right here, of course, on the channel. That was a nice piece as well. I forgot to ask her how much she paid for it. Um, but I will on the next time. Any I, any tips to identifying a Royal Ducks Bohemia vase if it's authentic? A couple of different things. Remember, there are a lot of forgeries or fake marks or marks that look like other marks for Royal Ducks, for um, a Royal, uh, the Austrian pieces, for a lot of those pieces. So I want you to look for a good mark. I want you to look for the quality of the piece, okay? So when you see that it's very well executed, well molded, well sculpted, if you will, and also well decorated, then you know you've got the real thing. Compare and contrast with other pieces that you know are, of course, the real thing. And if you need a video call with me to confirm it, we can do that as well, or you can always send a picture to the website. But video calls, of course, you can book them now, and I'll be happy to do those as well. That's one of the ways that you can, of course, let me say yay or nay to that piece that you're sort of on the fence for, you want it on the fence with. You want to make sure that you know what you're doing before you list it or before you add it to your collection. So that's great. That's great. Um, Christmas appliques on a hand-sewn vintage quilt. Okay, what's vintage? Is it 20 years old? Is it, you know, from the 90s or the, or the early 2000s? Or is it vintage like 1960s? Um, it's not antique prior to 1921, right? So we want to think about that. So let me know a little more specifics and I can help. Applique quilts are always popular as well as quilted and sewn and pieced quilt. Applique means you're gonna put something on top of the quilt. Pieced means you're doing the patchwork and you're piecing it together to make it the quilt. And then it's quilted after the fact. So good question. Thanks for the questions too. This is Ask Dr. Lori live. Here's my next guest. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, I'm Jesse. I'm in Pittsburgh. Hi Jesse. how are you? What have you got there? I have a fancy teacup and saucer. Fancy teacup and saucer. Okay. It has these three hand, three part handle. Okay. And it has some initials on the bottom. I think it says D E F number three. Okay. Can I see the? Can I see the whole the rest the inside of this other piece that you're holding it on this stand? Mm, okay. So that has a little bit of luster on the inside. Does that have the same mark on it? There's no mark on the bottom of the stand. Yeah, okay. So um, how'd you acquire it? Um, at a thrift shop for $10. Okay. Do you think you pay too much for it? I don't know. Do you think you pay too much for it? I don't, I mean, it's cute. It's $10. cute, okay. So it's worth about $10. It okay. dates to about the 1970s and it is molded and it is a studio piece. So it's a nice piece. But I would say that be, that if you like it, it's great. But I would say that on the resale market, you're probably not going to get too much for it. Why? Condition has one of the factors as well as the quality of the clay. So you have to have good quality pieces. But thank you very much. It's always nice to hear from Pittsburgh. <laughs> I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I want to hear your questions. I want to know what you're thinking. So I've heard so many nice things about how um, you're enjoying these and enjoying, of course, my thrifts with me series where I go thrift store shopping. Hi, Dr. Lori, do you have any suggestions for how to negotiate artwork in an art gallery? Yeah, one of the best ways, and of course I have worked in art galleries and of course major museums for a long time. And I will tell you one of the best ways is to be interested in the piece, but be ready to walk with your wallet. And that's true for negotiating anywhere. I always say be polite if you're truly interested, but you really are thinking, wow, this might be too much. You might wanna do what you would do when you negotiate with other things. Uh, but art is a little bit different. So what do I mean by that? First of all, I give negotiation and selling tips right here on the channel. There are, there are videos as well as on my website, all different information about selling tips on my blog. But the other thing that I want you to think about when it comes to an art gallery is it's important to know something about the artist and to know that they're, what their records are. Oftentimes art galleries 
of course, will up the value a little bit. And I would also say that it's a good idea for you to have a polite inquiry about how much is the artist getting out of this? See if you can find that information out. Now with the internet, there's lots of places to source, but I think the best way to negotiate is always politely. So be polite, Inter in introduce to the art dealer that, you know what, I don't really know if I'm willing to invest this much right now. And perhaps they'll be willing to make a negotiation. Sometimes if there's more than one piece that you're interested in, they're usually interested in making a bundle for you. But art is always a good investment long-term, but you wanna make sure you get it at a good bargain. Okay, oh, the quilt. The quilt, of course, will be 20 years old based on the appliques, a mix of piecework and appliques. Love it and got it for four bucks. Great, I need to see a picture of it. But an applique piece um, typically will increase value a little bit. If you look at the early applique pieces, you know, pieces from the not early 19th century, the mid 19th century, those are usually the quilts that are really pretty um, valuable and collectible, uh, particularly album quilts. Has Haskell jewelry always marked? Miriam Haskell marked most of her pieces. Um, it could be a situation where the little oval that is sort of uh, applied, attached to it, sometimes those do give way. So it could have been lost over time. If you think you have a Miriam Haskell piece, of course, I'll be happy to take a look at it. But, you know, most of the time, Miriam Haskell, Hattie Carnegie, uh, most of them are actually marked. Um, there are some that are unmarked, but it, it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare. You're going to see a Miriam Haskell. How about info on the prints beside me? The prints beside me are um, non-objective works. They're really quite fine. They are by an American artist who is active in New York City. Um, his name is Rudy Serra, and uh, he's taught at uh, Rutgers for a long time in New York, in New Jersey, excuse me, and uh, a great artist in his own right, a great sculptor as well as printmaker. So a lot of people like the, um, the way in which these pieces are, of course, black, white with just a little bit of purple. Tell me about the, mo the lobster mold. It's actually not a mold. This uh, piece that's right here on the front on the table is in fact the cover to a serving dish. I don't know, I grew up in New England, so there are a lot of those sort of fish stews and um, that kind of thing, lobster thermidor or lobster bisque kind of thing. So that was the top to one. The bottom of that piece is so big that it kind of sits up too high. So um, uh, we only here in the studio brought out that particular uh, piece. Thanks so much. Here's my next one. Oh, what are you drinking? What are you drinking and why don't you have one for me? Um, lemon iced tea. Oh, that's nice. So like an Arnold Palmer, they'd call that. Lemon with iced tea, right? Yes. All right. What's your name? How are you doing? Uh, my name is Nico. I'm in Tampa. Hi, Nico. So what have you got there? It looks like an art. Well, it looks like an earlier than art deco lamp. Um, it's signed and engraved um, Nymph O Roses. Okay. Um, L.F. Moreau. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> When I go, yeah, 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 yeah. That's because there are a lot of them out there. How did you acquire yours, Nico? Uh, I was from an aunt, a great aunt, uh, okay. that left it to a cousin who gave it to me. Okay, so what happened? The cousin didn't like it? Well, the cousin knew I liked it. Oh, well, that was nice. What did yeah. you do for that person? I'm always I'm like, what did you do for them? What did you do for the cousin since they did you a nice turn? Um, the only You're working one, on it? Are you working the family on it? that still talks to her. Oh, okay. Well, all right. Maybe you could work on something. Lunch? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, can I get a little closer to the um, the rose portions, the portion that looks like they're actually orange lights? Can I get uh, closer to that? Up here? Yeah. Yeah. Can you do that? I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Make you move it. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay? or? Yeah, that is okay. That helps me. And then all a right. little bit on the, the figure, all the way down the figure. Okay. Moreau is a French artist, a sculptor, of course, active in the late 19th century. In the early 20th century, a lot of his pieces get recast. And of course, in America, it can't just be a sculpture. It's got to be made into something functional. So they make a lot of them into lamps. I see maybe three of these a week, five of these every week really? that come in through, of course, our website or somebody's doing a video call with me or a priority service member. Value on yours. How tall is yours? Um, 24 inches, 23 inches and a half. 24. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good size. So that one would have probably been for a null post when you walk down a staircase in the late 19th, early 20th century. And then okay. of course the sculptures there value on your piece is going to be about $350. So it was Great. a gift from a cousin. Yes, it was. Or maybe a nice dinner. 
You know, you don't have to go crazy. Go. Maybe, maybe a nice dinner for that cousin. Nice to meet All you, right. Nico. Thank you. I always want to make sure we keep the peace, right? <laughs> Let's try to keep the peace. But that was nice that that piece ended up with somebody who liked it. So I like it too. Um, so that's terrific. I do appraise contemporary art. Yes, of course, I've been an art critic and a curator and for many, many years, a museum director. So sure, if you're an artist and you want me to take a look and evaluate your pieces, I suggest a video call. Call me up, we'll talk about your work. And of course I can do that. A lot of people prefer that. You don't know how much to ask. And now that's a great environment for artists, a great environment for artists to be able to, of course, resell their pieces. You have a Jack London Sea Wolf with a Jack London book plate to a friend, Paul Eldridge. All right, 1930. First of all, we have to find out if you have the, uh, the first edition. So you have to look at publication date as well as publisher, as well as condition of the book. I want a nice strong spine. I talk about the values of old books on one of the videos. So again, use the binge link. You remember the binge link? <laughs> use the binge link. So you can, of course, look those up as well. And book jackets are always gonna be, you know, dust covers. The book jacket is always gonna be um, an impact for value. It's a great thing. It'll bump value up. Um, and oftentimes with novels like that, you don't see a lot of scrap, a lot of um, notes in the margins or such. You know, I have a lot of friends in academia and they're always putting notes in the margins. Uh, I have one relative who actually is a librarian, always notes in the margins. But collectors don't care for notes in the margins unless they're, you know, notes from, you know, um, somebody else, some other author. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? Oh, I'm on. You're yeah. on. Hi, honey. <laughs> I'm Gail from California. I'm doing great. And Hi, Gail. I, I just am new to you, and I just think you're fantastic. So Thank you. You're so nice. I'm going to put on my gloves so we can be fantastic together. How does that okay. sound? I come with a okay. warning. I come with a warning. I have Parkinson's, so if I shake, it's not because I can't, I mean. All not. right, well, I'm happy that you're here and let's, let's promote a little bit of awareness. So what do we need to do? What do we need to do to help those? My parents had Alzheimer's for a long time, all of these different situations. So when it comes to something like Parkinson's, we just have to be a little bit patient, right? Absolutely, patience okay. works. There you go, nice to see you. Show me what you've got. Okay, I've got this. It's a morning piece. Right, it certainly is. And when you say it's a mourning piece, that means that it's a late 19th century piece of jewelry that would have been worn at a funeral or to mourn someone even after the funeral time has passed. Right. Okay. And it has the jet beads on it. They're all jet. Right, okay, so the black beads are jet. For those of you who don't know what jet is, of course, like onyx, a lot of people confuse jet and onyx, but jet is more typical. Is that sterling silver and is it marked? You know what? I haven't been able to find it. I just kind of got it. Um, Here's some of the places you might look. You all might look. So you've got this nice big pendant, right? I want you to look along these areas of the pendant. Okay. okay? I want you to look along the sides of the pendant, not only on the back. Oh, it's on, on the back. I can't find it. On the sides of the pendant often or mm -hmm. also on individual links. It's relatively large. I would think it hits about here. It's 20 inches in length. Oh, 20 inches in length only? Well, so yeah. 20 inches is about here. I'm 20. This is 24. It's got to be a little longer than 20, I would think, but I, I'm not going to question you. So let's say it's between 20 and 24 inches with the jet beads. Value on that piece is going to be pretty high at $750. How did you acquire it? $2.10 at a thrift shop. Wow, that's outrageous. That is outrageous. Yay. Good for you. Yeah. Yay. So Heck 750 yeah. because it is, of course, um, the sterling silver. It's jet. It's late 19th century morning pieces people do look for. There's a big collecting community out there for them. Wonderful piece of jewelry. Congratulations to you. Yay. Yay. And a lot of folks here would love to wear that necklace. <laughs> that's great. Heck that's great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you nice to much. see you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, see lots of cool stuff, cool stuff. Morning pieces, pieces that relate, of course, to something in culture. So the Victorians were very, very interested, in fact, and had, you know, big problems with, of course, death. So as we all do. But basically, uh, much of their culture was related to, of course, continuing to support and continuing to deal with and address the dead. Remember, you know, Queen Victoria, in fact, wore black for 10 years after Prince Albert died. So that idea, of course, of mourning and showing your respect for the, those who have lost is something that we typically see. Mourning jewelry relates directly to Victorian culture, and that's why that's so valuable. 
also the quality and condition of the piece also makes the value have an impact. That's a nice piece. Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. How are you? I'm great. I'm Elaine from um, Union, Missouri. And I have Hi, my Elaine. piece here. How are Hi. you doing? Look at that. That's a nice piece, isn't it? Yeah, I thought so. How so did you I acquire it? it? I got it in an auction with a lot of eight others, and I paid about $3 for it. Okay. So it has a stopper and it has two handles that can kind of connect at the top. It looks like there is a transferware design, an image of a woman on it. If you took the stopper off so the, you don't break the stopper, is there a mark on the bottom of the piece? It looks like it's ceramic with yes. some gilding. Yes, it's, uh, I thought it was Austria. Uh, let's see. Let's it has see. a crown mark in Austria? Right, right. Okay, so how much did you pay for it? Where did you get it? An auction, you paid $3? Yes. Okay, so it came in a lot. Can I see the front of it, please? Uh, that's the front. So time period for it is also uh, Victorian. That piece dates uh, just about 1901, which is just about the year that Queen Victoria passes away. That piece dates to about 1901. I would say value on that piece. How tall is it? Is it six inches? Six inches. Six inches. So you wanted about $40 for your $3 investment. Nice. I like it. All right. Thank you. Thanks for everything My you pleasure. Do. My pleasure. My pleasure. That's great. Yeah. So lots of things. Now that particular piece with someone's face on it, a lot of people like those pieces. Me, you know, my opinion, I don't know. Having someone's face looking at you every morning when you're trying to put your makeup on, I don't know, not my thing. You know, kind of like, you know, hair buns, not always my thing. But, you know, that's just my opinion. What are the hottest items you're seeing uh, the most of this summer? What's hot this summer? Here's what I'm seeing. Architectural salvage. I'm seeing uh, American Brilliant Cut Crystal. I'm seeing uh, vintage, um, vintage Louis Vuitton, vintage um, coach, which is really only goes back to 1941. I'm seeing those pieces. What else am I seeing? Colored glass, colored glass, colored glass. I'm seeing a lot of it. And not only Murano, all types of colored glass. I'm seeing that coming back hot. And um, 1980s prints. That's what I'm seeing this summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of cool stuff. Um, sunglasses as well. So, you know, those big Varney sunglasses and those big Nina Ricci sunglasses from the 70s that Jackie Kennedy Onassis used to wear. So London is 1904, the century coming with his wolf book plate. I'm interested in the impact of his personal library on the book plate in good condition. Yeah, I've got to see it. So I'll be happy to take a look at it. And yes, it will have an impact. When you have someone else who has a connection to that particular piece, it will increase value. So we have to get a baseline for all of the books. And then of course, talk about provenance and how that particular piece has more value. So thanks for that. That's great. I appreciate it. I need to see condition is what we're going to do next, but you've got it. You're on the right track. You've got the right track right here. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. Um, other questions, of course, other guests, if we've got them. And my opinions on what you've got is what I'm giving you. Don't forget to watch those videos about, of course, thrifting and what to look for. And if you can value these pieces, I'm going to teach you all different kinds of um, ideas and items. Don't forget to sign up for my newsletter. Subscribe to that. It will help you, of course, with more information. Subscribe to that newsletter at drlaurieV.com. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'll see you next time.